What's up, guys? Uh, Kupano here. Um, welcome to um, day three, I guess. Um, in this episode, we're gonna be try. We're gonna try and complete the calendar app we created the past previous two days. Um, the main thing I want to cover for this session is um, uh, some OOP principles. Um, we're gonna touch a little bit on the back end as well, and hopefully, we'll have a good skeleton of how the app should look like so today um, basically we're going to aim to finish the ui completely and touch a little bit of the back end hope you guys are excited um hope you guys have enjoyed the the journey so far and without further ado let's get right into it again guys if any of you guys have any questions please leave them in the comments um i think i'll leave my my email maybe somewhere in the description so you guys can contact me in the event that you have questions uh, reach out on linkedin Copano Mariri. Um, connect send me messages um, i do respond to everything or i try to respond to to everything cool let's get started without further ado day three um so guys just to recap what we touched upon last time um let me just open the app So this is what we have so far. We've created a beautiful login page. We should have a register page as well, so our users can register. And we've also created a tab, a tab layout. Um. So in the next session, what we're going to try and do is, well, this session rather, is um, we want that object or that list tile. Um, when a user first enters a task, we want it to appear here, right? So basically, that's what we're going to be doing today. Hopefully, we'll finish. Um, but you know, let's see. So, guys, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to add a floating action button on the bottom right of my page, um, just in case. Like, obviously, when my user needs to add a, a task, there needs to be some form of button that he, can, that he can press or something, right? So that's what we're going to try and do. So just minimize. Okay, cool. So, um. First thing is go to your home page, right? Go down. And maybe just, just above your body, just type in floating action button. Uh, floating action button takes a, a widget of type floating action button, right? My floating action button has a lot of parameters. One of them is it takes a child. And in this child, I can pass a text, a text widget. Oh no, I don't want to pass a text widget actually. I want to pass an icon widget. Yeah, I want to pass an icon widget. Let me say icon dot add, right? So my floating action button is going to have the icon of um, the add sign, I guess. You can change the color as well. So I'm going to make it blue. My color is not blue, I think. I'm gonna make it blue just like that. Let's run it. So floating action button is a parameter of scaffold. Just a reminder. So there's our floating action button. Cool. Um, our floating action button also takes an on tap or on pressed parameter. All right. And remember, when we're dealing with on pressed, we have to declare the function by using the um, the brackets and the parentheses. Just open that up. Cool. Go to your project. Right click lib. Click new. Click dot file. And create a new dot file and call it to do. So this dot file is going to be where my user is able to um, create a task, basically. So just type st4 and say call it to do. To do. Yeah, we're gonna get these errors because you have an important material. Not okay. Okay, great. Um, so now, how do we want our page to to look like? That's the question that we should ask ourselves. Um, obviously, uh, we we want it to be simple. We want it to be elegant. We want it to be neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return a scaffold. Um, 
just like that. And inside my scaffold, um, I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna use the body parameter, and I'm gonna declare a column. Right. Remember, column has a parameter of type widgets. This is where I can just put all my other little widgets inside. And I think the first thing I'm gonna add is so I'm gonna introduce a new widget to you guys. It's called the card widget. So this is like a material design card that you have access to where you can um, basically store content inside. It's some of you guys might have seen it. It's, um, Google Google websites use uh, makes heavy use of the card um, type widget style. So yeah, I'll I'll show you guys how it looks. So next we're gonna declare child. And we're gonna declare a container inside our card. Right, our container is basically gonna hold our the code I guess and my container is also gonna have a child of type column guys just a reminder the reason why I like so you don't necessarily need to say container and then column you can just say you can just give a um, column as a child but the reason why I use a uh, container is so that let's say I want to change the color or the background color the container which it has the parameter of color and it will change all my other children's color hence why I use a container Right, and I can. It has. It also has padding. The padding parameter, which a lot of other widgets don't have. You have to use like the padding widget. So to avoid that, I just wrap everything in a column engine. Um, okay, cool. Then we have the children. <clears throat> so inside my children, I'm going to declare um, the content. So I'm going to actually declare a, a text form field as promised. I did say I was going to use a text form field. Um, so, yeah, text form field. And um, we can let's declare a controller for a text form field so we can capture the input. Um, I'm going to call it title controller equals text editing controller, just like that. Um, just, I'm also going to just declare another one because um, I'm going to declare another card um, to, to, to store the description. So I'm just going to, I'm just thinking ahead. Let's just declare another one called desk control, basically description controller. Clear text editing controller just like that. And close. So come to your text form field, pass your title controller. Right, so we can capture the input that the user types in. Um, thereafter, we want to. Um, so let me show you how it looks before I start making changes. Um, go to your register page. No, your home page. Sorry, your home page. And inside your floating action button here, just navigate to that new screen we just created. Say so context dot push replace ah uh, not not dot push replacement so don't use push replacement use push this time um because obviously we don't want to close the app when our user when uh, when the user presses the back button so use push not push replacement pass a material page route pass a builder um remember our builder takes a context equal sign greater than and go to to do okay um, yeah there we go so just import your class as well okay let's just refresh and see how it looks like wait so there's an error somewhere and um, i probably didn't close my scaffold yeah So now when I press the plus button, it should open up my new page. So obviously it's not doing what I want, but um, I guess you can't, you guys can't actually see. So let's do this. Let us go to our column and center a line, everything. Can you guys see the card here? So it's 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 quite cool. Um, you might not be able to see it very clearly, but 
it is quite cool um, you know this is where now i'm gonna put my other widgets inside so um let's just think now let's okay let's let's change the parameters of our text form field right so i'm gonna use style and i'm gonna pass the text style okay uh, what do i want to change let's let's change the color firstly let's make it black Um, we can change the font weight. Font, I said font weight. Font weight as well. Um, make it bold. And font size. Change the font size and make it 13.0, just to make it clearly visible. Um, since we passed a controller here, the title controller come here. So no, actually no, 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 no. Um, rather, rather say hint style. In text, sorry. No, what is it? Not. Getting hint text. Oh, hint text is part of decoration, I think. Decoration, box decoration. Hmm. Is it not part of box decoration? What's hint style part of? Hmm. Okay, that's fine. Let's do it the other way. Just come to your title controller, say text, and pass an initial value. So maybe here just say enter title. So the user clearly knows what they have to do, right? And the thing with app design is you want to keep everything very simple. Um, you don't want to complicate things. A good developer, a good programmer, or software engineer will make complex tasks seem very simple. Um, see, um, I don't know. Let me just think. Why is it not showing? It could be because. Um, hmm, interesting. Okay, so it's not showing. I'm just trying to think why text form field controller. Let's just rerun it. Let's just rerun the app and see. I don't know why it's not showing. Okay. So sometimes, guys, flat um, the idea, uh, the 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 uh, Flutter or Android Studio is not. Uh, it doesn't allow you to sometimes, not all the time. It doesn't allow you to like hot reload for some reason. Uh, at at other at certain times, you might have to completely restart your app. To get it to show the changes so that's why it wasn't i had to just restart my app um but yeah so as you can see um, the user can clearly see that chair he has to enter the title so maybe let's add let's add some thoughts you know just to make it look nice and yeah guys what you what you want to do next right is just copy this card widget copy it all Comma, add, add some space. Just say height. Um, is it not? Oh, I said sixth box, sized box. Rather, say height. Um, give it a height of let's say twenty point zero. We'll we'll see how it looks, right? Comma, and then paste. So now instead of title controller here, just pass the description controller. Come to description controller and change the initial value so it says enter. Okay, I'm gonna say I want to do so that the user clearly knows what that particular text field is for. Let's see how it looks. Okay, there it goes. Um, so again, I'm having that same problem where it doesn't want to refresh. So I'm just going to rebuild my application. Another fun fact, well, not really a fun fact, but another um, uh, fact is that 
Guys, when you press hot reload, right, it doesn't necessarily rebuild the APK um, on your phone. Um, it just pushes the code, but it doesn't necessarily rebuild it. So let's say I, I work on an app and I just kept on hot reloading, then I disconnect my phone and go. Um, none of the changes would, ha would have taken effect until I've um, actually built my APK by pressing the, the build, the run, right? Yeah, so just a, just a fact if you guys ever run into that problem um, anyway let us see okay so it does say I oh no it's not updating on my phone okay um let's just pause refresh the screen okay. so i'm just it seems as if my screen mirroring isn't refreshing and um, that's not a train smash okay we can just close this and for those wondering what I'm using to show you guys, I'm using um, a Droid. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool too. I'm just gonna try and log in again, guys. Sorry. Just give me a moment. I think my app or something timed out. Right. We'll be back. Yeah, just reloading. Let's give it time. Guys, if any of you guys have any questions, again, please leave anything in the comments. Um, we, I will personally attend to any question that you guys might have. Cool. Um, Let's just open up the app. And up here. Okay, so again, I have to rerun it. But anyway, let me continue while the app uh, builds. So we've added this card. What we're going to try and add now is a button, right? So this button is for in the event that the user wants to. Actually, not, not the button. Let's first add um, those tags. So you guys saw how in the demo, I had those today, tomorrow, and another day tag. So that's what I'm going to try add. That's what I'm basically going to try add now. So the first thing you want to do is you want to declare another. Um, you want to give yourself a little bit of space using the size box. Give it a height. A height of... 10 declare a card the card can take type of child the um, parcel container parcel container okay. mesh, mesh, mesh. Uh, the container can take a child Pass a row. So I'm not sure if we've worked with rows before, but let me just explain on a row. So a row is basically um, very similar to a column, except it lines up your children horizontally. So it's almost it's exactly the same as a column, except your children get lined up horizontally. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to encase my text widget in a gesture detector. Obviously, just Use the children parameter just to detect it so that my little tag um, can be clicked. So the just the detector can take a child and pass a container for the just to detect it. Um, give it some padding. And remember when we give padding, we use edge insets. Edge insets, rather. Um, what a padding of, let's say, let's give it a padding of 10. Why not? Uh, pass a decoration. We're gonna pass a box decoration, right? Because I want it, I want I want my container to be circular. Um, hence, I'm passing a, a box decoration. Um, 
or should I first show you guys how it looks without them? Let me first show you how it looks without the ideas. Um, so without the decoration. So I'm gonna pass the child child type text. And inside this text it's just gonna to say today. And I'm gonna run. Yeah, so this is what I have so far. So obviously it doesn't look anything like uh, the app I showed you guys with was like today, tomorrow, none of date, and how they were circular and all neatly aligned together. So I'm going to try and give it a circular um, per decoration, I guess, so it can, so it looks a little better. So to do that, come to your container that we just created. Use the decoration parameter. Inside the decoration parameter, we're going to use border radius. Right? Border radius dot dot circular. Circular, and you're going to give it a curvature of 50. Right? Um, change the color as well to. So cool. Can you see how it's it's now become um, circular? So let's add three more. So I'm just literally just gonna copy this gesture detector. Sorry. I'm gonna paste. I'm gonna paste. Um, just change the text to tomorrow. For change this text to another date. Refresh. Let's see how it looks. Cool. Um, so we are getting there, but it's not exactly how I would like it to be. So first, what I would want to do, obviously, is I'd want to move it to the center a little bit. And maybe give a little bit of spacing in between the widgets. So to do that, just come to your row and use the main axis alignment parameter that you have. Use the cross axis alignment as well. Um, add a sized box. So usually we use we've been using the height of the size box to create padding, um, but since we're dealing with the row and I want to create padding. Um, horizontally, I would use width, the size box to width as opposed to size box type. Um, I'll give myself a spacing of 10 as well. Then I'm just going to copy this and paste the jazz one. See how it looks? Cool. So it's looking not too bad. Um, I, I personally think it's a little too close as well to my card. It's basically touching. Um, the parameter of my card. So I want to give it a little bit of padding. So I use the container so I can actually change the padding up a little bit. If I hadn't used the container, I'd have to actually add a, a, a padding widget to my my um, column. So I'm going to say that all. Um, maybe let's try a padding of five first. I don't know. I don't think this will be adequate, but let's see. I think I might have to use 10. Let's see. Yeah, let's use 10. Let's use 10. Cool. So I have today, tomorrow, and another day. All right. All right. Sweet. Um, what else? So it's looking good so far, I guess. Um, let's just add a button here at the end as well. Just so our user can obviously enter the, the item. So to do that, I'm going to say raised button. Always remember to override the on not override per se, but use the parameter on pressed for a raised button, or else you're going to run into problems when running it. Um, even if it's you don't necessarily do anything, just always 
have that parameter present. Then after I'm going to use child, and I'm going to type, I'm going to pass it a text. To, um, I'm just going to say um, confirm. Let's also change the color of the button. So to do that, I'm going to say color. I'm going to say colors dot blue. See how it looks. I don't have a size box, so it's not going to look too great. Let me add some padding. I'm just going to say height. Let's say 13. Don't forget your comma. Hard reload. Oh, okay. So I, I, I added it to... I added it to... Um, my row, hence why it's showing there. So just make sure you add it outside your row. Um, yeah, make sure you add it outside your row. Let's see. Row. Outside your card, rather, actually. Let's just delete all the space. I need to have all empty spaces. So yeah, add your button here. Hot reload. And yeah, there we go. Um, so cool, it's looking not too bad. Um, I think I'm gonna, I, I, I wanted to have circular edges, right? So I'm gonna override a property of the raised button that's called shape. So the shape parameter allows me to change basically the the look and feel of my button, um, and it, it it takes a lot of it can take a lot of parameters, but the one I'm going to use is the rounded rectangle border. It takes a border radius just like an input declaration, and you can just pass a border radius just like this border radius and circular, and you can pass a value of. Um, uh, you can pass a value of 18. You don't want it to be too circular, but it's up to you. Yeah. And this should work. Refresh. Cool. So my button is now circular. So now my user has, my user can actually enter a item. So great. We're done with this page. Um, so what I'm going to introduce now is I'm going to introduce a little bit of some back end concepts. Um, so yeah, we're gonna touch up a little bit on backend concepts. Um, what I want to do basically is I want to capture the input that my users my user has entered via a controller, the description is entered via a controller, and the option he's created here as well um, via a, a controller. When he clicks confirm, I wanna add. Um, I wanna add whatever you entered to my homepage. So to do that, come to lib. So what we're gonna try and do now is we're gonna try and declare an object, right? Come here, go to new, um, declare a new dot file. I'm gonna call it do me, right? I'm gonna declare a do me class. Guys, this, if you're not familiar with OOP concepts, please just go brush up on them because we are going to be making use of OOP. So the first parameter I want my to-do task to have is um, title, I guess. I want a description. Um, just another fact, guys. So in in Flutter or Dart rather, um, if you want to declare a private variable or pray a private variable, you use the underscore. So under underscore basically means that our variable is private. There's no private like there is in Java and, and C sharp. You actually have to use the underscore method on the variable. And I'm gonna say description. All right. Then I'm gonna say so. This is this is basically the 
the parameters that I'm creating for my object of type to do. Right. So obviously it needs a description. Um, I'm going to clear one option. I'm going to clear one for tasks. I'm going to clear one for complete. I'm going to clear one for active. I'm going to clear one for calendar date. For the day, one for the year, and the UID. Okay. Then I'm going to declare a constructor. And actually, another shortcut for you guys, right? If you click on an empty space inside your class and you press Alt and Set. Insert. Um, you actually have a lot of shortcuts that you can use um, that will auto generate your code. It can be very tedious to um, to constantly have to type all this. So like now, I'm going to declare the constructor, but I have so many variables that it's going to take me like 10 minutes. So, okay, let me just fix this as well. So, I'm going to click Alt Insert and I'm going to say constructor. It's going to ask what variables do I want in my constructor. I'm going to select it all by saying Control A and I'm going to press OK. Um, and then it's created a constructor for me um, by default. So it saves me quite a lot of time. Um, I also need to set my getters and my setters. So I'm going to say out and set, getter and setter. It's going to select me which ones. It's going to ask me which ones. I'm going to say control A. And I'm going to add um, all the, the getters and setters. If you want to type this in manually, you would um, say int get as day. And then obviously you'd go get the uh, SD variable, for example. So yeah, that's how you that's how you declare an object in Flutter. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is what do you what do you have to do? Right, and here basically what we're going to try and do is we're going to capture all the input that my user typed in. So I'm going to just copy all this. What we need to do is the gem, and I'm just going to change it up like this. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to populate my my do me object. So the reason why I'm doing this is I, I'm just lazy. I don't want to really type everything. If you guys are feeling like soldiers, it's fine. You can really type everything. Uh, declare your dummy object. Close the me. Right. Um, now I need to pass my variables. So, first, let's try and get the title. So, where is my title stored? It's stored inside my title controller. Right. Remember our title controller, we declared a chair at the top when we were creating our text point here. So I'm going to say title controller to text. This basically gets the input of what my user typed in for description. I'm going to say disk controller to text. Um, for pick, I'm just going to leave this empty for now. We don't have to have anything. Leave this empty for now. Leave this empty for now. Complete. 
the complete should be complete should be a, an, an integer actually so not an integer a bool and active should actually be a boolean so to declare a boolean variable you have to say b o o l um just go back to your to do me as well guys and change this to a uh, boolean right, you're gonna get an error it's because your getters and setters have now changed so i'm gonna delete them right and i'm gonna reapply them again just like that okay cool um so complete i'm gonna say false active i'm gonna say true calendar date um, i will leave this empty for now day i will leave this empty for now month i will leave this empty for now okay this takes a number so um, let's just say one one leave that empty yeah we can say 2020 i guess uid we can leave that empty for now so now pass your parameters press control and just hover on it then you'll actually see the different types of parameters that you have access to um, so now i'm just going to pass my title my description my pick my option option tasks complete active calendar date day this month this day this year this year and uid so i've now created an object i'm just fix this as well but i just need that one so now i've created an object which is cool um so where do i store these objects right because i can have multiple to do's so i need to create a list of some sort where i can put this object in right um, so i'm going to go to my main page my main main page and i'm going to declare a list here i'm going to make it static um, I'm declare a list um, of type to me right and i'm going to say call it my task So equals to list just like this i get an error here because i haven't imported my, my, imported my class as well remember just another quick fact um whenever you um represent it with two options um i know a problem i ran into is which one do i select do i select this one or this one so guys you always want to select the one with the full path or the full route rather if i had select this one not what would happen if i have multiple um, what if i have another do me class somewhere in my code um how would this main class know which one i'm referring to so always select the one with the full route cool then go to your to do and now since we've created um a list the reason why i put it in the main file right is because um i want i want to as soon as my app runs i want my list to be instantiated i want it to be in memory that's why i put it in the first 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 file um, thereafter, I'd say my app. So I'm gonna get an error because this class hasn't been import, imported yet. It has, or oh, has it? Maybe it has. Okay, it has been imported. I'm gonna say my tasks, then I'm gonna say dot add, and I'm gonna add the do me object I just created. <clears throat> cool. So now every time my user goes to the to do button. I get what the title he typed. I get the I get the description he typed, um, and I generate an object. We're gonna fill all these different parameters um, shortly, but I just wanna build the base before we um, before we fill them in. I guess 
Then I add them to my tasks list, right? Cool. So now what we're gonna do is just go to your home page. So what we're gonna try and do now is um, we're, gonna, we're gonna make it in such a way as that when my user enters a to-do, it, it, it reflects on my home page. So to do that, scroll down to the body of your scaffold, right? Remember we passed the tab bar view, yeah? Um, so now what we're gonna do is delete the first container, right? So deleting the first container means I've deleted the first content in the, my first tab, right? And if I was to run this, my app would crash simply because I don't have three contents or three tabs now anymore, no longer, with the content of the tab. So I'm going to introduce a new widget called list view, Dutch builder, right? Um, this has, this is, a, this, this is what you use in the event you want to display objects to your user, right? So in my list view builder, it takes an item builder. Right. My item builder takes a context and it takes an index. Just like that. And you have to return a widget inside your list time, your list view builder. Um, it also takes a item count parameter. Um, so in my case, item count basically is how many um, objects does your list have. So since this can be dynamic, I can't necessarily hard code a value. So I have to actually get the length of um, my list right, by saying my app dot my tasks dot length. This is my static list that I created in the main dot that file. Thereafter, I'm going to introduce another widget to you guys. It's called the list view tile. You're going to, for a person, I make heavy use of this. It's a, it's a beautiful widget. Um, that I use whenever I have to list some stuff. So I'm going to return a list tile, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So list tile has similar parameters to my app bar. It has a leading a subtitle and a title. My list tile is, is like it's like a widget where you can what would I say? It's where you can store your content in, I guess. So, declare leading. Um, so leading remembers the first thing that's the first first thing on your widget. Um, I want an icon. A default icon. So I'm gonna say icons dot. I don't know which one. Maybe this one message. That looks cool. It has a title parameter as well. So now for my title, right, I don't want to hard code my title. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass my task. I'm going to pass an index. And I'm going to pass the title. Um, I'm not sure if it takes a text or a string or a widget. Oh, it takes a widget. So if it takes a widget, right, it just simply means that I can't pass a string. I must pass a text widget. Then, then I can do that. It has a subtitle as well. Subtitle is what goes underneath the title. So like I said, guys, I, I will run and show you how it looks. I'm going to say my app dot. Okay, that's, I, I, I'd want to show my description, but now I'm just thinking that a description can be very long, so I don't want to necessarily show the description on the home page, right? I don't want to show the title. Maybe we'll just say text. Um, um, I don't know. What can we say? I'll just say one, one of three tasks from now. I'll just hard code this for now. I will go back and change it at a later stage. Okay, let's run this and see how it looks. I'm actually going to press play. 
so guys also um if you guys want me to build any other type of app um please just leave in the comments and if i get the time i'll try and make a tutorial on the app that you guys want to see me build so maybe you want to see me build an uber or um, an airbnb using flutter or something let me know so i'm going to click confirm okay so I, I i the reason why it's not working right is because i did not give it an action to do so i, I could just go to your to do page so what happens after i've added my object nothing right it added the object but then one then what so i actually want to send it back to my home screen so i'm going to say navigate it dot of dot you have to pass a context you say dot push say push replacement because we don't want him to go back Pass a material route, material page route. Remember, it takes a folder, it takes a context, it calls greater than sign, and take it to the home page. And we get this error because we have not imported the home page. Remember, don't select this one, select this one. refresh okay that's what happens when you press confirm now there we go it actually generates our list view so um we were able to generate a list view um we we're able to generate an, an object um so now let me just show you guys exactly what i mean so let's say i had a grocery list that says go buy more I'm gonna say confirm. Can you see? <laughs> but milk. I don't know why it says but milk. But uh, you guys can see that you can dynamically add content. So just another thing I want to add before I end this video. I wonder how long we've been recording for. Let's just see. I don't want this. I'm just. I don't. I don't know if I should continue or create a new video for what I wanna do. Okay, it's fine. Let's end here, guys. Um, I will create another video on um how to make these tags selectable so that when I when the user presses it, it turns green, black, blue, whatever color we might wanna select. Yeah, I just don't want this video to run too long. Okay, guys, thank you for, for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, please share the content. Um, um, engage with us at Spanify, at Qubit Engineering, at S-P-A-A-N-I-F-Y, at Q-U-B-I-T Engineering. Um, I will leave the socials in the description. Hope you guys learned. Um, I hope you guys are getting a customized to Flutter. And I will see you in the next one. Deuces. Cheers.